Okay, here we're going to find the cube roots of the complex number negative 8 minus 8i. If you think about graphing this complex number, it's going to be sitting down in quadrant 3. We can find the r value, the, the modulus, by taking the square root of negative 8 squared plus 8, negative 8 squared again. So then we'll have 64 plus 64, or 2 times 64. And we can take the square root of 64 and just have 8 times root 2. Likewise, I think it's pretty easy to see that uh, the angle between the negative x-axis and my little dotted line here, that'll be 45 degrees or pi over 4. So if we add to that pi, we can use that theta equals 5 pi over 4. So in trigonometric form, our number will look like 8 times root 2 multiplied by cosine of 5 pi over 4 plus i times sine of 5 pi over 4. So now we've got our trigonometric form. We're just going to find the three distinct roots of our complex number by using this formula, and we'll let k equal 0, 1, and 2. So now we can just start running through the cases. So if k equals 0, we've got to take the cube root of our r value, which is 8 times root 2. And we'll simplify that a little bit here. And then we'll have cosine of our theta value, which is 5 pi over 4. And we'll, have, uh, we'll add to that 2 pi times k, which in this case is 0. That's all over 3. And then we'll add to that i times sine of 5 pi over 4 plus 2 pi times 0, again, all over 3. So if we can take the cube root of 8, that'll just be 2, and then we're still left with taking the cube root of the square root of 2. Well, the cube root of the square root of 2, we can write that as the square root of 2 raised to the 1 3rd power. Well, that's 2 to the 1 half raised to the 1 3rd power. And that's going to give us 2 multiplied by 2 to the 1 6th power. And we can write that as 2 times the 6th root of 2. So that's going to be the, the value up front. We'll have 2 times the 6th root of 2 multiplied by cosine of, well, we'll have 5 pi over 4 divided by 3, which will be 5 pi over 12. That's not a value I know off the top of my head, so I'm just going to leave it like that. And then we'll also have sine of 5 pi over 12. So that'll be one solution. Now let's do the k equals 1 and k equals 2 case. k equals 1, again, we'll have the cube root of 8 times the square root of 2. We'll get the exact same thing. We'll have 2 times the sixth root of 2. And then we'll have cosine of 5 pi over 4 plus 2 pi over 3 plus i times sine of 5 pi over 4 plus 2 pi all over 3. So again, now I'm just going to simplify. We'll have 5 pi over 4. If we add 2 pi, well, we can make that 8 pi over 4. So it'll give us 13 pi over 4. And if we take 13 pi over 4 and divide by 3, that'll be 13 pi over 4 times a third, which will be 13 pi over 12. Again, a value I don't know. So I'm just going to leave the solution as 2 times the sixth root of 2. We'll have cosine of 13 pi over 12 plus i times sine of 13 pi over 12. So now we just have one last case, and that's where k equals 2. So again, out front, we'll still have 2 times the 6th root of 2. We'll have cosine of 5 pi over 4. And this time, we'll have 2 pi multiplied by 2, all over 3, plus i times the sine of 5 pi over 4, plus 2 pi multiplied by 2, all over 3, same thing, let's just simplify. We'll have 5 pi over 4. We'll have 4 pi over 1. So that's 5 pi over 4 plus 
Um, I guess we'll have 16 pi over 4. That'll be 21 pi over 4. And the same thing as before. If we divide by 3, that's the same thing as multiplying by 1 third. Well, 21 over 3 is 7. So that's going to leave us with, uh, in this case, we'll be left with 7 pi over 4. That's actually one that I could evaluate, but I think I'm just going to leave it alone since we're leaving all the others as cosine of some angle and sine of some angle. So we'll have 2 times the sixth root of 2. We'll be left with cosine of 7 pi over 4 plus i times sine of 7 pi over 4. And now we found our, our solutions.